Hello everybody, I'm here with uh, one more example of uh, two degree of freedom system. Remember this problem? This is probably the third time you're seeing this problem if you're following all the videos that I've put uh, already on YouTube um, by the time you see this video. Uh, this is basically <clears throat> the same problem that you've already uh, we have already done. Remember a two degree of freedom system with two masses and two springs, right? Coupled together. So here the mass, uh, masses of these uh, to, uh, for the system given and the spring uh, stiffnesses are given. And uh, <clears throat> you guys remember that if you draw the free body diagram and write the equation of motion, you end up having a system of differential equations that are coupled together. And we already have the solution based on the method that I showed you, based on finding the uh, natural frequencies, the eigenvalues, and the mode shapes, the eigenvectors. And you guys remember that uh, based on a, some arbitrary initial condition that x1 at t equals 0, x1 is equal to 2, 2 centimeters, or whatever unit you want, and x2 is a stationary, it doesn't move. So in other words, we are moving mass 1, 2 centimeters in one direction, and mass 2 remains stationary. And then the initial velocities are equal to 0. So based on that initial condition, we ended up finding the motion of mass 1 and mass 2. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, I encourage you to go and take a look at them. So we already have the solution, but... What if now you want to use the Laplace to solve the system of differential equations? So this is another way, not as significant as understanding. Uh, it doesn't tell you much about the system, really. If you use Laplace, you, you can't uh, really, uh, unless if you've seen many of these problems, you can't say, say, okay, this is the frequency of the system, or this is the mode shape of the system, and so on. Anyway, so... so so how do we uh, solve the system of differential equation using Laplace? Very easy, actually. You recall that uh, the Laplace of a second derivative, some second derivative of some function, let's say x, x double dot, right, is s squared x of s minus s x of 0 and minus x dot of 0. Those are the initial conditions, right? So <clears throat> basically try to take the Laplace of, this equation and Laplace of this equation. So you have the second derivative here, right? So you would use, uh, first of all, you have to factor the 9 out, right? Or 9 times this bracket, s squared, exactly what you see here, right? And um, plus 27x1 of s, because the Laplace of x1 is x1 of s, and minus 3x2 of s. Okay, similarly, Take the Laplace of the second equation, and you get the following. But now remember uh, that uh, x1 of 0 is 0, x2 of 0 is 0. This is also 0, the initial uh, position of mass 2. But initial position of mass 1 is 2 centimeters, or whatever unit. So that's 9 times 2s becomes 18s and goes to this side. And if you actually try to uh, group x1s together, you end up getting 9s squ s squared plus 27, and then you have a minus 3x, 2 of s here. And then the same thing in the second equation, you end up getting s squared plus 3 for x2 of s, and then you have minus 3x1 of s, which is written here. Okay, <clears throat> so what you have here actually is a system of linear equations, actually. Uh, and the two unknowns are x1 of s and x2 of s, if you find these two. And this is done actually, you're pretty much done. So we're using what we call a substitution method, as if, you know, you're solving, you know, uh, something like this, 3x plus 4y equals something, 2x plus 5y equals something. It's like, imagine if x, uh, or even uh, better than that, 3x1 plus 4x2 equal something, then 2x1 plus 5x2 equals something. So basically, we want to find x1 and uh, x2 here. So you do what? Substitution method or elimination method. Substitution would be easier in this case, since you see the right-hand side of this equation is equal to 0. Oops. 
Okay, I was erasing something. All right, <clears throat> so what I did, I just rearranged this equation. I said x1 of s is equal to s squared divided by 3, right? x2 of s. And then I, I will take this and substitute it right here, guys, in place of x of s, x1 of s, rather. And then this equation is going to be only in terms of x2 of s. And then eventually I can, you know, show that x2 of s is equal to that. And then x1 of s, once you have x2 of s, which is this, would be s squared plus 3 over 3, right? So let me go to the next page now. <clears throat> and then I rewrite uh, the two equations. But I'm just going to show you the inverse Laplace for one of them. Something that you've already seen, but just as a reminder. So to find x1 of t, you take the inverse Laplace. How do we do inverse Laplace? By partial fraction. Now notice that this is really interesting, that this s to the power 4 over 6 s squared plus 8 can be factored into what? s squared plus, uh, plus 2 and s squared plus uh, 4. And this is exact, this is like your omega 1 squared and this is your like your omega 2 squared. So you can start seeing actually the uh, the things that you have seen in the past, the frequency of root 2, omega 1, and frequency of uh, 2 radians per second for omega 2. All right, <clears throat> so, so I've already broken it down into two parentheses, just like what I did here. Right? So now remember that because we have s squared in the denominator, we have to go with a linear type of uh, function up here. So a s plus b plus c s plus d. Okay? So uh, actually, I should I cross these because they can come out to be zero eventually. But let's not worry about that. So you guys already know what I did in the class uh, at the beginning of the course. Remember when we reviewed the Laplace? I would um, do a match, find the numerator on this side, and the denominator, common denominator, obviously, is s squared plus 2 times s squared plus 4. And this is basically the numerator that I put here, right here. So basically, it ends up being as, as plus b times s squared plus 4 plus c s plus d times that, equal what? Matching it with the numerator here, 2s cubed plus 6s. So when you clean this up, you get an a plus c s cubed, b plus d s squared, 4a plus 2 c s, 4, uh, 4b plus 2d constant. So obviously we have a 2s cubed here, so this must be equal to 2. So a plus c equal to as shown here. Uh, <clears throat> b plus d must be 0 because there is no s squared term. In a way, you have a 0 s squared term. Uh, 4a plus 2c must be equal to 6, right? Here we go. b plus d, we said already, is 0. And 4b plus d, this two, uh, 2d, plus, uh, which is a constant, must be also 0 here. <clears throat> okay, so when you have something like this, b plus d equals 0, 4b plus d equals 0, uh, that just means that both of these must be 0. So that's why I cross b and d here, okay? So B and D are gone. And then if you come back here and try to solve this problem, well, what I did, I multiplied by a negative 2 and tried to solve it. So try to eliminate C actually. So I end up getting minus 2C and I have a minus 4 here. So you end up getting minus 2A plus 4A, 2A equal 2, A becomes 1 and C becomes 1. So if A becomes 1 and C becomes 1, so you end up getting this for x1 of c, and then when you go back to time domain, remember the inverse Laplace of, uh, I'm sorry, this is, whoops, this is s here, and this is s, a s and c s, 1 times s, 1 times s. Inverse Laplace of what? s over uh, s squared plus omega squared is equal to what? Cosine omega t. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, this goes back as, so this is like root 2 squared, right? So that would be uh, your natural frequency 1, and this is 2 squared. So you guys remember that was omega 1, and that's omega 2. All right, similarly, if you come here and try to do an inverse Laplace, and try to do this on your own, guys, on a piece of paper, 
and show for yourself, just follow exactly the same format that I did here and show that it actually becomes three cosine root two T minus three cosine two T, which is, we, we already got this in another video. Okay, so uh, remember Laplace is just another method to just prove what's going on uh, or prove that uh, what we did earlier is correct and we are validating that. But uh, remember the other method of getting the frequencies, right? Natural frequencies and getting the mode shapes. It, it gives you a better idea of what's going on. You know, the U1 and U2, you guys remember this. All right, guys, so thank you uh, for watching and listening. And uh, I'll come up with another example, maybe for uh, the week beginning of, um, you know, April, um, which would be related to uh, actually maybe even the week after that, uh, related to the suspension system of a car. Uh, and we'll see how we can uh, find the natural frequencies. That's also a two degree freedom system that I'm going to show you and try to find the uh, natural frequencies and the mode shapes. Thank you.